Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to WatchYouWant.com. Thanks for logging on. In 2000, Officine Panerai, watch manufacturer native to Florence, Italy, transplanted to Neuchâtel, Switzerland, swore that they would only make 500 PAM64 Luminor submersibles, better known as La Bamba, to collectors. Psych! They totally made another one. Well, not exactly. They made important changes that created this Panerai Luminor submersible PAM87, and in my opinion, not only is this watch more attractive, but it has a more interesting story behind it, because the collectors who had bought those original PAM64s, which are, make no mistake, awesome watches and landmark watches in their own right, they raised hell when this thing came out, because they thought they were going to have something that was unique above and beyond. And the bottom line is they do, but this blue-dialed PAM87 was sort of like the kissing cousin of the 64. And so after two initial years of production, 500 units apiece, this one was a 2001 in 500 units, and after that, 2002, they built 500 more. Uh, Panerai actually yielded to the collector's hue and cry and changed the dial. There were two major changes made that make the 2001 and 2002 PM87s totally unique in the series. And the first is that they have the more pinched style of indexes that the 64 had. You could see how there's an outer minute track beyond the, uh, the indexes, the little patinaed tritium indexes here. You can see that minute track is a space between the bezel and the indexes themselves fully calibrated all the way around, that disappeared after 2002. Likewise, the bezel calibrations, which on this first year, this is a, a D-series PAM87, by the way, on this first year model, you see how the calibrations resemble the PAM64? Again, after 2002, those went away. These watches in the first two years of 87 production are sort of a discontinued offshoot of Panerai evolution in the sense that they represent a sort of middle ground between the later 2003, 4, and 5 PAM87s and the earlier 64s. In a lot of ways, this is Panerai's missing link for the submersible style watches, the deep divers. And it's a great watch because of the controversy in which it was born. It has an awesome story behind it, but that's only the beginning. Because in addition to the history, it's a great watch. I love blue dials. To be honest, Knowing nothing about the 87 or the 64, I would choose this one hands down. Not only do you have that gorgeous blue and the monotone sub-seconds at 9 o'clock, remember on the 64, it's a contrasting silver dial on a black. It's just gorgeous because that tritium patina, the submersibles used tritium long after the 1998 sunset for the conventional Panerai watches, that, tr that tritium patina has created a natural dirty dial look, almost like an aged Panerai dive watch from the 30s, the 40s, or the 50s, you get that organic and somewhat uneven aging of the tritium radioactive material on the loom. And every single one of these watches ages a little differently. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. But this example, offered by WatchYouWant.com, has a beautiful tan, almost bronzed tritium that's uniform across all of these what are called sausage indexes. Not only do you have tremendous legibility and all those hallmark features of the traditional Panerai Luminor submersible, but you've got what might be a one-of-a-kind deep brown patina matched against that gorgeous blue dial. And again, because this dial only endured for two years of production and only a total of 1,000 were made over those two years, this is a real rarity and a classic reference. Collectors can never decide what they prefer, the 64 or the 87. It is the battle eternal on the Panaristi forums, and you can join the battle with this PAM87. But all of the classic submersible details are here. Now, with the 64, we saw the introduction of the helium release valve into the Panerai Luminor case, and that continues here with the 87. What it is, basically, is a deep dive feature for extreme dive watches when you're breathing exotic oxygen mixtures at depth. If you're down in a diving bell, over time, helium will build up, and it'll build up in your system, and it'll build up inside the watch. But while a person can decompress relatively quickly during his ascent, as long as he stops as prescribed, uh, the watch cannot decompress nearly as quickly. It can't keep up with the human body's decompression rate. So as you ascend, if you don't have that helium release valve, eventually it will blow out the crystal. The helium that is accumulated in the case will assert itself and blow out the crystal like a grenade. And that was actually a major problem, and it used to plague Comex divers, the original deep-sea dive firm that commissioned Rolex to develop this technology in the 60s. Now, Panerai adds it to its modern deep divers, so when the pressure internally reaches three bar, that pops out and does the deed. Now, 
Although every Panerai combat watch from the 30s, 40s, and 50s is nominally, quote, a dive watch, the bottom line is today ISO 6425 defines what a dive watch is. And one of the keys is to have this unidirectional rotating bezel. When aligned with the minute hand, like so, it can be used as a sort of simple 60-minute chronograph, and you can time off intervals, anything from cooking to halftime during a football game, um, you know, my condolences, Seahawks fans, I'm very sorry to bring that up. That's a faux pas right there, quick change the subject. To the kids' time out, to food on the grill. The bottom line is, this is a very useful feature, and I know that even during college, I use the dive bezel on my Omega Seamaster to time tests. So there's a lot of practicality there, and all the classic Panerai Luminor features are present and correct. From the beautiful one-to-one -one aspect ratio cushion case that sits free and easy on the wrist, despite its size, it's very comfortable. It actually sits flat on a six and a third inch wrist right there. That's the style with Panerai. Again, you can see just how thick that baby is. This one is every inch the Bomba or the Tuna Can that the 64 was. And it also features every inch the locking crown guard that made the Luminor famous in the early 90s. A great original Panerai innovation debuted during the 1950s. It allows you to easily wind the watch and access the winding crown without having to unscrew it like you would with a Rolex or Breitling or Omega screw down crown, which are often difficult to manipulate when your hands are sweaty or wet, kind of defeats the purpose of a dive watch. It's also a COSC certified chronometer, as many of the original um, Unitas and Valju powered Panerai watches were. And that's a refinement that's kind of fallen by the wayside as the company has taken movement production in, in house. I miss it. It's kind of a romantic little seal of approval from a great Swiss institution, a great watchmaking tradition, I feel that the chronometer status of these watches adds a lot of value. This watch is available in outstanding condition. A true collector classic, a cult classic, an object of controversy, a watch that never fails to inflame passions one way or the other. This Panerai Luminor Submersible 1000 meter PAM 87 is available from watchyouwant.com in outstanding condition. Check it out on our website, watchyouwant.com. If you love the Bomba style, but you're a true blue fan, I think this PAM 87 is going to be just the Panerai submersible you want.